uh, Marlowe Symphony for yes. yeah third movement. Very 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 common effect builds up. What we are playing with is um, the fact that brass instruments are very directional. The sound travels very much in the direction that the bell is pointing, as opposed to woodwind or string instruments, which are where the sound emanates equally, more or less equally in all directions. So. So I don't know if the microphone will pick that up, but the sound definitely travels in different directions. I think if I went from side to side, you would be able to hear the effect as well. I see. The sound is going in different directions. So um, bell, bells up usually is asked for when the composer simply wants a more uh, present horn sound. Yes, the tone colour changes slightly. That is purely as a result of the sound taking a more direct route to the audience's ears. Cuivre. 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 Okay, um, cuivre, or brassy, has, has been uh, called for very often since, since at least the uh, Romantic period. And is really just to play with a very, as the name suggests, brassy sound. So. Um, more lip tension, uh, especially more air, that would cause the very vibrant ringing sound. You can nearly get the same sort of effect by just writing very loud dynamic markings, but I think most players would interpret it a little bit differently. If you want to be very um, avant-garde, I, I, no, I see nothing wrong in writing cuivre and then piano at the bottom. It would be interesting to see how that works. So. piano or mezzo piano cuivre. Basically you're just calling for a more metallic sound without without using any any sorts of mutes. So that's uh, that's cuivre. On the other on the other end of the spectrum you can also call for a veiled sound. Th these are things really you just write in the text at the top. With a veiled sound what I would do is to really cover as much of the bell as possible, and if possible, give the player some time to adjust his tuning slide because with a different hand position, the intonation. covering most of the... I am covering a lot more of the bell than I normally would. It is nearly uh, nearly similar to the uh, three-quarter stopped effect that we talked about earlier, except that I'm using regular fingerings and the intonation, I've, I've uh, fixed it by changing my tuning slide position. With three-quarter stop, what I did was uh, to lower it by a semitone here and raise it back to the or original pitch by using I different see. fingerings. Okay. Yeah. So but this one is correct fingerings, but you change the, change tube. the tuning slide position. Um, okay. The opposite is again possible. Hand out of the bell, but now I have to pull out to bring it back to regular pitch, and this will have a very, uh, very direct, very raw sound. So. <laughs> Things are we don't have um, standardized notation or yes. standardized pitches. I, I would just say remove hand from the bell and again give the player time to adjust uh, his tuning slide. The, the next few techniques that I'm going to demonstrate involve a change in the embouchure, so they can be quite tricky. <laughs> With this 
this as well as all the following uh, the following two that we're going to demonstrate the, uh, it, they are really very much uh, tone color effects you it would be unfair I think to expect a lot of flexibility or agility or in fact range using uh, this sort of things because it involves a change uh, the use of a non-standard embouchure in this case I'm really opening up as much as possible and letting as much air in as possible so that's uh, that's the breath tone so I, if you could hear, there's a lot of air involved in that sound. You can nearly hear the along with the pitch. So that's where, where would you recommend writing? Which register or mid um, middle? Absolutely, middle, middle register. Yeah. <laughs> It's very difficult to yeah. get the air noise. Um, let's try the upper limit. Is it? <laughs> So really, a, 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 an octave of range, is essentially. So what is a uh, static noise? Static uh, noise bus tone. Yeah. and bus tone are, for me, quite similar, but with very different um, uses. Static noise. That, um, I would say there are two different kinds of static noise. There's the pitched variety and the unpitched variety. The unpitched variety is much easier to get result. I'm going to try that again. <laughs> that was the pitch variety. so cool. It's like that electronic is, music. <laughs> that is the unpitched static noise. Uh, pitched static noise, uh, a little bit more difficult because I have to get that soft sound while still having a definite pitch. And what, were you, what were you actually doing? So um, I'm using a very pocket embouchure. So Instead of that, I'm going nearly. I see. Yeah, it's definitely significantly easier to do a, a unpitched static noise. Now, if you want a pitch in that sort of noise, what I could suggest would be the next uh, technique I'm going to use: a uh, bus tone. Bus tone. It, you don't really get the electronic effect, but you get. A bus. So. Very buzzy, very nasal. So it's uh, the embouchure again, right? Again, it's an embouchure difference. Okay. Of of all these three that we just just talked about, breath tone, static noise, bus tone. Bus tone has, um, has is the least limited in terms of flexibility, in terms of range. And get all the way down to a G3. Still not a great range, but it's definitely more than, say, with a breath tone or, or a pitched static noise. S some, some people might think, literals work on any note, the, the, which is not true. Below a certain range, you won't, you won't get harmonics close enough to each other. So, um, I think a safe place to do, a safe lower limit for literal would be from written G4. That would be a literal and finger trills. On using the, the vowels, right? Is using the vowels. So. So in this per particular uh, instance. Um, G to A, I do have the option of literal or valve trill, but this isn't uh, always the case. When when you want to uh, decide on which notes um, can be done on a literal, it is just a matter of knowing the harmonic series and where you have where in the harmonic series I have two notes right next to each other. When you want to know 
where you can do a finger trill is a matter of knowing um, the fingering chart. You want a trill where you press down a key, a valve, to go lower and lift it up to go higher. So is very easy. So on and so forth. But beyond that, I would be careful because this is where, even on the B flat horn, I start to have harmonics that are very close together. So if I try. That is very dangerous. For a C to D trill, we would usually use a lip trill. So. Like oh, so. I see. It's yeah. because the harmonics are so close that uh, that, that, you that, will that, just that moving the valves is not going to um, make much of a dis difference, which is very related to um, bisbigliando or uh, timbre trill, for example. And this is why finger trills don't work for that, because you get the same note on at least four or five different fingerings. So I see. On this C, there's at least four fingerings. I, there should be at least one more. I can't think of it off the top of my head. Oh, I see. Yeah. Okay. okay. So just moving the fingers is not going to do anything for you. So really, from, from roughly that area onwards, you need to start using lip trills. And how to decide whether it's going to be a lip trill or a finger trill is knowing harmonic series and knowing the, the fingerings. If it was a uh, valved, then tremolos larger than a second would be no problem. So. It's a little bit messy, but still, I would say, still usable. Okay. It is easier uh, lower down when, when you go for something larger than a second. If there was a lip tremolo larger than a second, again, again possible, but this is probably the most difficult of, of all of them. So there's, there's a big danger of getting the note in between, which is yeah, the not very fast so you can use it if if you want if you have a player that's very capable of doing that but otherwise I would keep the tremolos use tremolos by all means but use finger tremolos and again like finger trills is a matter of pressing down to go down and lifting up to go up otherwise it's not going to work for example um, this totally won't work because I'm pressing down to go up so that's not going to work. With um, if I want to do C to E, there should be a fingering for this. Yes. No. Theoretically, it should work, but it is safest when you're only using one valve to go down. With uh, two valves and a major third as interval, which is quite big already for a tremolo, um, it gets a bit dangerous. So yes, you can use... Um, you tremolos. recommend one valve? I recommend using one valve wherever possible, both for trills and tremolos. Where you have to use more than one valve, well, the best thing that I can say is uh, consult the person who's going to be performing your piece. Without the bell, um, yeah, so you lose a huge amount of resonance. The sound becomes much more direct but not in the um, not in the same way as earlier on when we play it with the hand out of the bell. Again, I have to adjust the intonation with the tuning slide. Different sound, yeah as, yeah. as as opposed to with the bell, as as well as as opposed to with the bell but the hand up is is still different. Yeah, we tried that. Playing with an open slide is a uh, is a matter of experimenting because you can 
is very unpredictable as to what sort of uh, note you would get. If I were to remove my main tuning slide, I would get the shortest possible tube, and I will get. <laughs> <laughs> quite strange. I find that not very usable. If I wanted a more usable open slide uh, sound, I would go for this slide because that gives me a longer tube to work with. Has anybody tried uh, playing and sliding at the same time? Um, like a trombone? Yeah. I, I would not because with these tuning slides, they are meant, they are designed to stay in the same place once you put them, once you set them in the, in the right position. Which means that if I want to adjust it while playing, I've, I do have to use quite a lot of effort. Aside from the trombone and possibly the tuba, because on some designs of tuba, there is a slide that is meant for you to adjust with your hand.